come to our lesson today. Uh, today we shall start by uh, maybe our topic on demand and supply. I want us to study about demand and uh, supply. Okay, under this topic, it is one of the ways in which we are determining the price of a product. They are called the, uh, maybe price mechanisms, assuming that a producer produces his or her products and uh, he or she wants the price or the cost of the value of that item. Then the forces of demand and supply will actually uh, maybe form the price of that product. Before or we much ado, let us uh, define what is demand. Demand is the quantity of a product that buyers or that a buyer is willing and able to buy at a given price over a given or over a particular type. That is actually the definition of a demand. And in this definition, we should be able to actually highlight some keywords. One of it is the quantity. Quantity, we are talking of the amount. Then, of course, the person who is involved here is the buyer. That is actually what will distinguish between demand and supply. Because when we shall look at supply later on, this one will deal with the seller. But demand is that the, uh, what the buyer is demanding. We have also two keywords here, is willing and able. Willing in that the buyer has some interest. He wants that commodity. Able to mean that this buyer have money. You know, most of us buyers, we are willing, but the ability becomes a problem because we don't have uh, sufficient funds to uh, maybe buy that product. Uh, maybe the price also is uh, uh, critical because uh, when the price of a product is altered, maybe increased from 10 to 15 shillings, then this buyer, his ability might either come down or go up depending on uh, what you understand, but it will come down because when the price goes up, uh, the ability will uh, come down. Let us look at factors affecting demand. Factors influencing demand. Factors influencing demand. In other words, we are talking of the determinants of demand. Determinants of demand. Uh, the, 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 maybe uh, the quantity of a commodity that will be demanded first of all depends on the price price is one factor which affects demand and of course price i don't know if you can try to think assuming that maybe normally the price of bread is 50 shillings and this price is being altered maybe changed from 50 increased to 60 shillings what will happen if the price is increased from 50 to 60, then it means that the ability of the buyers will come down. So, if the price increases, the demand falls. And vice versa. Vice versa, I mean, if this price of 50 is maybe reduced to 25 shillings, it means that if uh, those people who are not able to buy, or the, the, the maybe those people on, who could not afford to buy this bread at 50 shillings, if their price is lowered to 25, some of them will actually have that ability or capability and they will be able to buy. This means that a reduction or a decrease 
in price will lead to an increase in quantity demanded. Uh, number two, uh, level of consumer income, level of consumer income. Level of consumer income. We mean when we talk of income here, we mean actually what you generate or what you earn as your income in form of maybe salaries, wages. What what your revenue actually? What is your money? And in this case, we shall actually not deal with the, all the income. We, should, we we deal with what we call disposable income. The amount of money which you want to use to dispose in order to buy goods and services. So you'll realize here, uh, if we have an increase in consumer income, if consumer income increases, then this guy will be able to buy more goods. And by buying more goods, we mean that the demand will go up. So uh, to explain this point, an increase in consumer income leads to an increase in demand, while a decrease or a reduction or a fall in consumer income will lead to a fall in demand. Assuming that a case, maybe somebody uh, initially or at present, maybe this guy has some disposable amount of 10,000 shillings per month. This amount increases to 20,000 shillings. It means that if this guy was consuming a quarter of meat and of course that quarter is not enough for uh, just for survival right? then it means that because the consumers or his income his disposable income has increased he will increase that quantity of meat from maybe a quarter and uh, he can be able to even consume a half so you'll realize that when the consumer income increases also the quantity demand then will increase and vice versa we mean if the consumer income is reduced then the quantity demanded will reduce point number three let us look at uh, population population also plays a key role in business studies because uh, producers usually highly depend on the population and that is why most of the people are trying to establish businesses in where we have a dense population because the population actually forms the market and this market creates the demand in other words what I mean here is that the higher the population higher population will have what we call increase the demand For example, currently in Kenya, the current population is uh, approximately uh, 50, billion, 50 million people. Sorry. Then uh, you can try to see what is being demanded now. Assuming we are demanding a uh, common commodity like bread, then we could be consuming, assuming uh, maybe a hundred or a given number of breads. Then if you go back, maybe some 20 years down the line, the population was around 30. So what we are consuming now is much higher compared to uh, that time, 10 years back the line. So if the population is low, then here we have what we call decreased demand. Decreased demand. Uh, point number four, let us look at uh, future expectations of changes in prices future expectations of changes in prices future expectation of changes in prices here we are trying to look at the future what does the future say so we are in the present assuming that uh, currently this month of July one bag or one kg of maize is going at uh, 30 shillings. Then, the future, meaning maybe January next year, people think that this price will change. You know, the price can change either positively or negatively. It can either increase or reduce. So currently, uh, maybe one kg of maize is 30 shillings. 
and people think try to anticipate that come January next year this one is as August then January next year one kg of maize might even go up to 50 shillings so as a buyer as a buyer who wants to buy maize what will you do now the price currently August one kg 30 shillings January, you know very well that January come January next year, 1 kg 50 shillings. What will you, how will you react now? You will react by buying more now. So we realize that. If people, consumers, the buyers, if they expect prices to increase in future, then they will buy much of that commodity now. And by buying much of that commodity now, they are increasing the demand. On the other hand, in case, uh, of course, the future is uh, some future date, assuming that these prices, uh, it is currently that, but people know that uh, come January next year, this price can even drop to 15 shillings. So we'll realize most of the people will not buy. They will be actually waiting for January to enjoy the 15 shillings per kilo. In other words, if people expect that the prices of goods and services will come down, then they will not buy and by not buy they will be making the demand to decrease demand will come down uh, point number five distribution of incomes distribution of income distribution of income to distribute mean uh, does everybody have income or is it, does it have the geographical area covered by those people receiving incomes or this income is only in the hands of few individuals? So if income is distributed well, if all, of, all the people, the majority of the people can be able to assess uh, their income, then demand will increase. But if the income is only limited to the hands of few individuals, then uh, demand will increase decrease because those few individuals will be buying goods for their own. The others might even not buy anything because they don't have the income. But if the income is well distributed, then demand will increase. If income is not well distributed, demand will fall. Uh, maybe those are the few points. Before we look at supply, let, uh, let me mention something on the law of demand. Law of demand. Uh, I will derive my law of demand from the price. Just to summarize this one, I will derive my law of demand from the price. I say if the price increases, demand falls and vice versa. So that will form actually what we call the law of demand. If price increases, demand reduces while if price decreases demand increases so you can realize that this one is actually in case you increase the price, the demand comes down. In case you reduce the price, the demand uh, goes up. Goes up. We have two types of demand. We have two types of demand. Let me go through the two types of demand. Types of demand. Types of demand. Number one, we have what we call derived. Demand. Derived demand. When you talk of derived, we mean actually you can buy something so that you can be able to actually get what you want. And I will use from the word to derive. You get something from what you want. And I will use a very good example here of a hen and eggs. Assuming that you want eggs, if you want eggs, then you will be forced to buy a hen. So that you make your, 
you don't incur much expenses. If you want an egg, you buy a hen. So the demand of this hen is being derived from the demand of eggs. Because you want egg, the actual commodity which you want here is an egg. Then you will be, you will be forced to buy a hen. And we are deriving uh, the demand of hen from eggs. That is what we call derived demand. Number two, uh, joint demand. Joint, from the word joint. Here, you mean those products which are demanded jointly. In other words, those products which are used together. E.g. Example. E.g. a car and fuel. Of course, you will not buy a car, make it move without using uh, the driving force or uh, the uh, fuel. Other examples include maybe uh, a pen and ink. For example, this pen of mine, this pen will not write if, that, if it does not have ink. I need to, I, I will refill the ink so that the pen will do the writing part. This is what we call joint demand. Those commodities which are demanded together. Uh, maybe in our next lesson we shall come and look at uh, movement and shift in demand curves. But before we look at movement and shift in demand curve, I'll come uh, before we look at that, we shall look at what we call demand schedule that is in our next lesson. Have a good day.